Hello, good morning, and welcome to ESPN First Take, the show where debate happens. And the boys are out and about today. I'm your moderator, Jay Crawford. Skip Bayless joining us from New York City. Stephen A. Smith is in Philadelphia. Guys, good morning to you both. What's up? Good morning, Jay Crawford. <laughs> hey, Jay. Hey, Stephen A. Go ahead. I had a great la night Skip, last night. I don't night hear in New York you. City just so you know. Webby Awards. Maybe that's a good thing right now because I can't hear a word you're saying. That <laughs> might work for me, Skip. Well, wait, Stephen, I can't hear me? No, he can't, but go ahead. Yes, I can, I can hear you. You, you got I can now. hear you now, unfortunately. <laughs> Finally, I, I thought you were going to try to shut me out for the whole day. As I was trying to there say, I had a great night last night at the Webby's in New York City as we ah. received our award for All He Does Is Win, most of that attributed to DJ Steve Porter, and DJ and I got to go up on stage. Spike Lee and Jeremy Lin, the great Spike Lee and the hopes to be great Jeremy Lin, presented <laughs> the award to us, and it was a great night. I had Juliet Lewis sitting behind me, Ileana Douglas sitting to my left, and the great Jamie Horowitz sitting to my right. I was in heaven. <laughs> Who's that? I'm not, I, I'm not, I, I'm not mad <laughs> at that? you. I love it. Uh, congratulations, but forgive me if the most important component of this award uh, is something I have to bring up. By virtue of us winning the Webby for that, we don't have to talk about Tim Tebow for a full day. That is a very touching thing for me, Skip Bayless. Very touching. Well, I want to say publicly, I'm not sure I am capable of sitting through two hours of live television without uttering the name Tebow. So you might have to put me in some kind of rehab or therapy after tomorrow. I'll tell you that you're yes, not capable of doing that. And I will be willing to put you in the rehab. I'm glad you brought that up. I, actually, I happen to think you need it half the time anyway, so it works yeah, for me. Yeah, we'll see after this show. <laughs> well, look, that happens tomorrow. Tebow free TV. And Skip, if you say his name, you go into the penalty box. It's just that simple, so you'll have to stay Tebow free. Right now, let's embrace yeah, debate, we'll shall we? And first up on first take, for the second straight year, the Los Angeles Lakers are a second-round bounce from the NBA playoffs. The Oklahoma City Thunder, powered again by Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant, one game five, 106 90 last night. They win the series four games to one. Kobe Bryant, 42 points. The next leading scorer was Pau Gasol. He had 14. Let's hand out blame, gentlemen, because that's what we do. Stephen A. Smith, who is most to blame for the Lakers' loss. Well, for me, it, it was it was Bynum last night simply because he decided not to show up. Uh, clearly, he could have played better. He could have been a bit more active. He admitted that it was his worst game of the playoffs, and I'm not about to argue with him. He was just he just didn't show up. He was a no-show uh, in game five, and as a result, considering the fact that he's in a position where the Los Angeles Lakers have to consider their future as it pertains to him, whether they're going to give him an extension, a lengthy a long-term extension or whether or not they're going to move him elsewhere, you would think that he would have put forth a better performance, but he just didn't show up. I know Kobe Bryant was all over Pau Gasol. I know that Kobe Bryant felt that Pau Gasol could have, been, could have played better, at least this particular game. He was clearly more aggressive, and I'll give him credit for that. Uh, he didn't play exceptionally well, made a few mistakes. So did Kobe, by the way. But at the end of the day, it comes on the shoulders of Bynum because the Oklahoma City Thunder really, really, in terms of their roster, didn't have anybody of consequence that was supposed to be able to deal with Bynum. But Bynum was a virtual no-show at the most inopportune time imaginable. And as a result, I will put most of the blame on him, Skip. Okay, Stephen A. Smith. Why do you think he was a no-show last night? Do you think it was all about Bynum? Or might we blame a couple of other people? You're putting it all on his shoulders? Yeah, I am. In terms of his performance, not the loss per se. I mean, obviously, there were other people involved, but he was a no-show. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm indicting him for. He was a no-show. Okay. He decided not to show up. Let me explain why. I will agree with you. Andrew Bynum checked out last night, and it was very difficult to watch. He wound up with four total rebounds after, what, 30 at San Antonio in the middle of the season? And for that, I definitely blame Bynum to a degree, but more so Stephen A. Smith. I blame, number one, his coach Mike Brown, and number two, the Black Mamba, Kobe Bryant, who once again was not the Black Mamba. And what did I predict to you, Stephen A., back two, three weeks ago, three weeks ago? 
I told you that at mm -hmm. some point in the playoffs, Andrew Bynum would quit on Mike Brown. Remember after Mike Brown kept benching him late in games, late in the season? That was both you of us. you saw him walk that by Mike Brown? That was both of us saying that. Yeah, that. Okay. Go ahead. And you saw him walk by Mike Brown in the locker room after the <laughs> Oklahoma City loss at Staples late in the year. And you said, uh-oh, right. this does not look good. Well, I think, voila, Andrew Bynum got even last night. And then number two, Bynum's a smart young man. I think he has a high basketball IQ, maybe too high for his own good on some nights because, Stephen A., Andrew Bynum realized from the get-go that Kobe Bryant was going to play hero ball last night. He was effectively going to go one on five or at least one on two or three. And mm -hmm. as usual, Bynum, who complained all year about not getting the ball enough in the post, disengaged on the defensive end when he wasn't involved on the offensive end. Do you realize Kobe took 33 shots last night to Andrew Bynum's 10 yes. shots? And the, the, mm. the, the thing about the Lakers, what did we see in game seven against Denver back at Staples? When we saw them at their peak, at their best, when they had to be, we saw Kobe moving the ball. Kobe took only 16 shots that game against Denver and, and fed the post and they spread it back out, in and out to the three-point shooters. Blake made five threes. Artest made four threes that night. Kobe made a couple of threes. Last night, Kobe was one for six from the three-point line. They made two total threes for the game. It needs to go into Bynum and then out. It needs to move around the perimeter. They can't win, Stephen A., with Kobe Bryant at the end of his 16th season trying to ground and pound for 42 points because it was that was hard to watch. Every It, it took well, so listen. much effort for him to score 42. Well, first of all, there's a couple of things that you're, you're, you're neglecting to mention. Number one, through the first three quarters, Kobe Bryant was absolutely balling. And during the rest period that Mike Brown granted him was when Oklahoma yep. City started making their, making their run. And before he blinked, they were down 11. This is a team that spent the entire first three quarters within three points of one another. They were going back and forth, tit for tat. Mike Brown takes Kobe Bryant out, and all of a sudden, the rest of the boys couldn't get it done. That's number one. Number two, Andrew Bynum. Again, we go back to him. Why do we go back to him? Because that weak jump hook with his, you know, with, from the left hand side. He kept throwing it up with his left hand. It wouldn't make. A, it would. It would. It would barely touch the rim all night long. Kendrick Perkins didn't even have to put his hands up. This guy barely could touch the rim. He was clearly disengaged. He was not into it, and that's what this all comes down to. And number three, last but not least. This is a person, we're going to revisit this subject a little bit later on in the show, but this is a person that you called the best big man in the game. And why did I say yeah, he, he was not? Not just because, not just, he's not. He is absolutely positively not. And this is one of the reasons why. Because let me tell you something right now. Whereas you can look at a guy like Dwight Howard, again, and we can pick apart those positions, and we'll do it later on in the show, but you look at a guy like Andrew Bynum, he chooses not to show up. I mean, he makes a conscientious decision that, you know what, I'm just not here today. I just don't feel like it. And this is one of those moments where I don't feel like it. And it's game five, the closeout game, and you're trying to sit here and talk to me about Coach Mike Brown or, or Kobe Bryant? Yeah. No. This is on that big seven-foot-one center, okay, that – sat there and lollygagged the entire game. The ball was, you watched the game, Skip. I know you did. You know I did. You watched it. The ball was thrown into the dude. He kept throwing it back out. He wasn't fighting for position on other plays. Other times when he was fighting for position, he was throwing the ball back out or he'd make a weak move, not do much with it. He clearly, flagrantly lacked a level of aggression that was necessary for a game of this magnitude. There's just no way around it. Okay, Kobe Bryant, I repeat, took 33 shots last night, Stephen A. And I agree with you. He was balling the best he could ball all the way up until he had to rest to start the fourth quarter. But you can't right. expect him at his advanced age with, what do you say, he's got 50 million miles on his body. You got some big stat on that. You can't expect him to be able to play 48 minutes of a playoff game in that cauldron that is that Chesapeake uh, Arena at, in Oklahoma City. It's hot, it's loud, and he can't sustain it. They can't win Kobe or bust. They, they needed to get Bynum involved early, and I'm, I'm with you, Stephen A. 
He can be fragile. He can be thin skinned. He can be temperamental. But man, if you click, if, if you plug him in early, all he did during the regular season was average 19 points and 12 rebounds and two blocks a game. I'll take that any night. But they didn't get it last night yeah. because I don't think they asked for it last night. I thought they did, and that's the difference with you and my opinion. I think they did early. I think that not only did Kobe Bryant come out balling, but he had ample opportunity to get involved, and they saw that he was disengaged. They saw that he was interested in going home. This is the same bottom. Keep in mind, Skip, this is the same bottom that body checked J.J. Barea in the closeout game four last year in Dallas yeah. when they were getting swept. When things go south, this dude bails. That's the problem. He's a big-time front runner, And I'm not questioning his skills because I know he's got the skills. I'm not questioning how dominant he can be when he's got his A game because that is true. But when things are going south, your boy leaves. He leaves the party. He doesn't want any part of it. He just sit there and, and he just he disengages and he disappears. Out. This is what he does. He My wanted to get to, he wanted to get ejected last year. He didn't show up last night. Okay. My boy Bynum got kicked out of the party numerous times late in the year by Mike Brown. You know it and I know it. I'm talking about fourth quarter and overtime benchings. Why skip? This is Why was he benched? That was one time. Starter. Starter. That was no, one it time. Was multiple times. Multiple. Not bench, and, Skip. And I don't no, no, I was him. at the game Stephen when he a. was benched. I know. I said you walk by Mike Brown and he, in the locker room. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.